So today it's going to be a four card oracle with dyadic cross finishes. I hope you like them. If you do, please punch that button. And if you can subscribe, that's fantastic. It does a lot for me. I'm not sure what it does for you, but it will help me out. Thanks a lot. Here we go. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So I'm going to do a four card that you pick with dyadic rock, dyadic cross finishes for each of those. So think of what you want to um, um, have a question on. You're going to have four choices to pick a card. I'll be using for that the ancient Italian tarot. Uh, they look so, sort of like that. And then the um, uh, the Chinese tarot for the uh, dyadic cross uh, finishes. So let's get started. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wei Gulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit, and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just uh, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in just a typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just a, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to do have the cards. So, there. And, um, but the cards themselves are pretty cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back, but then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that uh, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means, and you know, you know what I mean? So, there we go. So this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck. And, you know, I like to spread them out like this for two reasons. One, if you're working with somebody, you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards. And two, um, you know, when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just this short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like it. Yeah, I thought these cards would be nice for this uh, Oracle uh, four card. And um, so choose your numbers one, two, three, or four. Right now is the perfect time to just take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Maybe do that a few times if you think you need to. Con consider the questions that you want to ask while I'm shuffling these cards. So I think um, this is going to be a good time to clear our minds, kind of try to wash away all the the negativity of what's going on in the world right now. I mean, we're, we're under lockdowns in different parts of the world. Um, folks aren't smart enough to know that if you're offered a cure, take it. And um, so four, four cards, four questions. You could ask four questions uh, or just one. And uh, let's see how this is going to work out for you. I'll take four of these. One, two, three, and four. Okay, we're really done with these now, so I'm going to take them right out of the frame. And we'll put these down so that you can decide which cards you want to choose. So we've got one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. You know, remember, you can stop this tape and take a breath, um, gather yourself, or just watch right through. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. I'll put these up here, and we'll start with this one, and we'll see if we get yes, no answers for these. So the first card, if this is the one you chose, this one is the uh, Knight of Cups. <clears throat> you know, cups, like I always tell you, are um, emotion, uh, passion, and compassion, uh, some deep uh, rooted uh, feelings and uh, worthwhile causes. 
and uh, the Knight of Cups is uh, the fellow who's going to fight for these for these uh, for these passions and uh, in uh, for the royal court. So this is a strong card. This is a yes card, and this tells me that regarding this issue, um, there's a definite solution um, that is available to you with just a little bit of thought. Okay, if you chose number two, this is the Five of Swords. And uh, the Five of Swords, you know, swords are truth and justice and uh, conviction. And, um, but unfortunately, in this case, the Five of Swords typically demonstrates uh, an abuse, uh, a feeling of being taken advantage of, or perhaps of taking advantage of someone. So this, for me, is a no card. So whatever the issue was, that you've associated with this pick, the number two, we got the five of swords, and this is, um, you know, sort of an abuse of power. If you chose number three, then we've got the tower card. And again, this is a, another no card. This is the complete um, end of the situation. It's uh, destruction, it's uh, irreversible, and it's finished. Uh, the good part about this is that there will be pieces to pick up afterward to rebuild from, but is the it's the definite end of um, this uh, turbulent uh, situation. So that's the number three card. Now, if you chose number four, then we've got the three of pentacles, the three of coins. And uh, for me, this is a collaboration. This is a yes card. So if you chose this card, this is telling me that yes, uh, whatever this issue is that uh, you you're dealing with, with um, um, help with uh, a union with others, not just one other, but with a group. Uh, you can uh, finish this with lots of value and be proud uh, to put it up for public display. So that's the four cards that we got. We got the Knight of Cups. That's a yes card. Compassion is going to happen with some purpose involved. We got the number two is a five of swords. And so this is feeling and abuse, uh, perhaps uh, even uh, participating in that. The number three card, of course, is the tower card, and this is a complete stop. This is the, the crumbling of the issue. It's come apart, and there's some bits left to start back up again, but this is a no card. And if you pick the number four card, then this is a yes card. This is the three of coins, and this one is telling us that with collaboration, we can produce something that's very uh, pleasing for uh, to put up for display and represent us. So I'm turn these three back over. And then we'll use this Knight of Cups as the, sort of the guiding light, okay, to help us uh, in the divination uh, of this uh, uh, Dianic Cross. So we're going to use the Chinese Tarot for this one, uh, like I talked about. And uh, let's really um, put your mind to work, okay? It doesn't mean you can't be in a, rela a relaxed and restful state, but you want to just uh, activate that part of your brain that uh, is creative, okay? That's looking for solutions. So close your eyes, think about whatever this is that you need to work through. That'll send me hopefully a little clue as to how to interpret the cards for you, okay? Let's spread these out. Wow, that's kind of a mess. I'm gonna spread them out again. But I think before I do that, I'm gonna cut them. So we'll, we'll start again, much better, and take six cards uh, for this divination. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, and finally right here, six. Put these over here to sort of work on the energy that's going to be needed for that. Fan these out and start in on your issue, the um, signifier for the issue that you're dealing with. Keeping in mind, this Knight of Cups is going to bring us the uh, determined uh, compassion that we need to work through whatever this thing is. Yes card. Okay, so the signifier for this is the Lovers. Okay, that's a beautiful card to get. This is a cooperation, companionships, uh, working with someone, recognizing someone. And I love how we see in this little in this little uh, vignette that we have here, there's a little uh, uh, container with a tiny little frog inside. And he seems to be emitting some sort of little song. 
out here. And it apparently is a beautiful uh, rendition of some happy um, uh, outcome. So the lovers is a signifier for that, and that's beautiful. Now let's see what's the challenge to the lovers for, for this issue that you need so much compassion for. Uh, the challenge to that, ah, so this is the page of wands. The, the wands are, are an action, they're a plan, they're movement forward. This is the fire energy of all the sweets. So this is gonna get something done. But the page, on the other hand of that, is the least you know um, authoritative of the cards to bring this forward. So this uh, kind uh, uh, old man is kind of bringing this issue forward and saying, let's, let's consider this. Perhaps this is something that can help you move in that direction. And it's just kind of a slowing down, and uh, that makes it the challenge to this uh, lover's uh, energy. Now, the base of this reading, then, is the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is you know, the plenty. This is this beautiful woman is setting the table with everything she needs for a nice, successful um, situation that she's coming into. She has a perfectly decorated home. She's beautifully dressed. Everything is completely in order. And she has all her cups laid out and even seems to have one extra, one to spare. So we, we come to the base of this with everything uh, that we need in front of us uh, to make this uh, situation uh, work out. And then the uh, past of this uh, situation is a Six of uh, Wands. The Six of Wands, and again, we repeat that the Wands are uh, motion, uh, planning, and the Six always speaks to us of celebrations, of a victory, okay? And so this uh, Six of Wands it almost looks like this is a woman here, perhaps. It could be a man. But whomever it is, is in full command of the plan uh, that, they've, that they're they putting forward here. And they've, and they've completed lots of other successful uh, actions. And in this hand, he's holding the other. Uh, so he's got these bookmarked both ends of that uh, situation. So liking that very much for the past. In the sky of this reading, we have the King of Cups. So we're going right back to this compassion to this emotion and being in complete control. He's the most authoritative figure uh, to deal with this uh, um, passionate issue, okay? So we wanna shoot for that. That's the sky, this is our goal. Our goal is to be the King of Cups. And when you started out the journey as the Knight of Compassion, then that's not an unrealistic uh, goal to, uh, to aim for. And then the final outcome of the situation for you, with this big yes card is the Three of Coins, and the Three of Coins is working together for some beautiful display uh, to put up for the public. Perfect uh, reading. Set him aside. Reincorporate these into the pack. And then start to think about that number two choice. So if you chose number two, that was the Five of Swords. It makes us think about I put those cards in upside down. I'm sure I did. So I'm not going to go back and hunt them out because I'm not going to deal with reverse cards in this reading today. Of course, they're all upside down. But we'll take a minute to sort them out. What else have you got to do, right? I mean, we've got 15 minutes or so here. We can think about ourselves. Dedicate some times to us, to you, instead of everybody else. So, and just like the abuse of power that card represents, if we take a minute to sort out, just like I did, those things in our life that uh, cause us uh, discomfort, then the end result is going to be a calmer, more relaxed, um, thorough answer to whatever this issue is that you've got. Okay, so the guiding light in this case is going to be this five of swords, sort of an abuse of power. I'll take six cards for that. I'll start it with one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to leave these cards over here to work on the issues that are left. 
So the Five of Swords, feeling as if we've been taken advantage of. Perhaps we have done the uh, taking advantage. The signifier card for that, then, is this Eight of Coins. Coins are passion um, and compassion. I'm sorry. Pa uh, coins are, are value. I'm sorry. And this can even mean uh, money. Um, the uh, value that we bring to a, a situation, um, the uh, skill that we bring in uh, working through an issue, and the practice that it takes to even first achieve that skill. I like this card a lot. So this card shows us this fellow is working with some sort of a, an oven here to really uh, bake through the issue. And whatever remains, it's not useful. It's just uh, all up in smoke. And while this fellow here is really perfecting his craft, look, he has the, the, all the right tools to work through uh, these uh, issues of importance. Signifier card. The challenge to that is the king of wands. Again, wands are actions, plans, firepower, getting something done, firepower. So this king uh, uh, is the challenge, this king of wands is the challenge to the patience of uh, getting this thing right. We always want to move on. We want to take our plan and make it happen. But we need to uh, be sure that we get it, the base, get the foundation correct. If you start it out with a solid foundation, then you can move on to the action. Don't abuse your power. In the uh, base of this reading, then, is the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups, cups are always compassion, emotion, uh, planning. Uh, it makes us think of it makes us think of a better time when things were perhaps plentiful, when uh, emotions, emotions were on a more of an even keel. But we can see here that even in the best of times, you can lose a little bit of your enthusiasm. It can spill out in your uh, celebration of how things uh, were. So let's make sure that if we're hoping for things to be the way they were, that uh, we're being cautious and uh, realistic about uh, what that was. And the past of this reading is the King of Cups. So we've got two kings on either side of perfection. So the uh, King of Cups, again, speaks to uh, this um, uh, compassion that we have down here and really uh, understanding the power that it, it wields. Okay. Now, the sky of this reading is the Wheel of Fortune. Love the Wheel of Fortune. It tells us that this cycle is moving around, that it will come to completion, that something new will begin to happen, and it's always a positive card for me. So even though we started out with a no card, we can move this thing into a better position with just patience and understanding our uh, power in it. The likely outcome for all of this, then, look at that. I took all that time to um, uh, look for those reversed cards, and I still came out with a reversed uh, card here. And so this is wands. And I've sort of decided to use some some written um, definitions of uh, these cards uh, to help me get through my uh, hesitancy of, of them. And so for this one, this page of, of wands is sort of bad news. Um, it's sort of um, a delayed uh, reaction. And I do like that. Uh, for this because it does bring us back to the original answer which was a no so to recap uh, this felt like it was an abuse we, we need the patience to perfect our craft we are challenged by anxious to get this plan going we remember how wonderful things were when we had things exactly the way we wanted them um, we came into this understanding the emotions that were involved of course it's always uh, the wheel of fortune it's always a roulette wheel going around and we hope it's going to land in the proper position for us but it can be um, not exactly what we want it to be so knowing that you can change the direction of this decision just knowing that if you take each step in this day one thoughtful step at a time even if things don't come out exactly the way you wanted them to, at least in the end, you can understand uh, what is uh, being accomplished here and move on to another decision. So that's those cards. So we'll put those back in and hopefully we'll put them back in in the correct order. So 
So that just tells you, I went to all that trouble to make sure those cards were uh, upright and that page found its way um, to the end result. I'm starting to embrace the reverse cards a little bit more as I take my time to develop the definitions for them. So the third choice then, if that was one of the cards or the only card that you chose, is the tower. Okay, so this is a no card. This is the end. This is um, devastation. This is uh, disorder. It's disheveled. But it leaves, oh boy, and look at that. It's all depicted in uh, my actions here. All of this is really uncanny. But um, just like I just did, you can pick up from that uh, disheveled situation, create something of order and usefulness to continue your journey. Just what I did. I had a tower moment. I calmly picked up everything that I needed, put them back into order, got things arranged the way I want them, and then I'm looking forward to the future to see how I'm going to deal with that. And that's what happens when you pick the tower card. So we need uh, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to leave this <coughs> over here to work on that energy. Take some thoughtful consideration. The tower card. The signifier for this is the Hierophant, the Heavenly Master, as it's um, uh, divined in this in this deck. And um, the uh, Hierophant is the rules. It's the governing uh, body. It's the way that a thing is prescribed to be done. Um, it could even be um, the situation in the environment that you're in uh, that maybe you've rebelled against a little bit. The uh, challenge to that to the Hierophant, to the rules, is the Ace of Coins. So this is an offer of value. And so this uh, person here shows us that they're comfortably sitting on all their possessions, it looks like, and holding up their value. And he's taking a good look at it. He's really considering what can be done with this. And a lot can be done with this. This is the beginning of something wonderful. Just like I said, you pick up what's good and you decide, what am I going to do now? The base of this reading is the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands, you know, Wands are action, motion, power, planning. And this is a lot of all of that coming quickly at the same time, almost simultaneously. So we started out with lots of actions, lots of issues that, that needed to be sorted. And the past of this reading is the Nine of Coins, which is very great because the Nine of Coins speaks to us of just having everything we need all the value we, that we possess and that we want on a string, okay? We, we're fully capable of controlling this uh, value. We've got it under hand, okay? And that's how we came into this, even if you didn't realize it. But remember, you're swinging around all these coins, and we have the tower card governing the, uh, this uh, reading. So uh, keeping with the coins, in the sky of this, we have the king of coins. And what's happening here, of course, is we want to make sure that we're the master of whatever this value is. We've grasped it with two hands. We're looking to the future. We're comfortably contemplating what's the next step. What are the rules to follow? And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is the three of wands, which is long-term planning. So again, just like I said, once we've had this disruption, um, <clears throat> you want to think about what are the rules? How do we need to go forward? What's the best way to use this awesome uh, uh, remainder of what was? Um, <clears throat> we've sorted through the issues uh, that uh, hopefully uh, we've dealt with the issues that brought us to here. We've understood that we have a lot of value. We know that we need to be in charge of that. And with long-term plans, with some thought and consideration, we can do that. Okay? So that's where we are. If you chose number three, the tower card. Move these back into the pack and think about that last card, which is the Three of Coins. And the Three of Coins is really a cooperation with um, competent people of a like mind to achieve something that's really perfect, that we don't mind hanging out our window or showing off to our friends. So, let's see what are the six cards 
they're going to help us with this issue. Five and then six. Three of coin is sort of the guiding uh, power, the guiding energy uh, for this uh, dyadic cross. Another yes card. So the signifier for this then is the queen of wands. So this is the um, wizened queen. Okay, she has her courtiers here helping her uh, move forward with the plan, with the big plan that she's in full control of. Okay, comfortably uh, moving her issue forward. Three people, three of coins. The um, challenge to that movement, though, is the devil. And, of course, it is. You know, whenever we feel so comfortable, we have to make sure that whatever those lesser intentions might be around the issue, that we're aware of them. Look, this devil is ready to just cast this chain and hold us back. And uh, this devil is ready to take this um, uh, sword and, uh, and uh, interrupt uh, what's happening here. So the challenge to this wizened queen's plan are lesser intentions. The uh, base of this reading then is death. And death isn't death. Death is the end of a cycle. And it makes perfect sense that if we got to the end, that now we're going to need to move forward. We want to move forward in a beautiful way. Okay. And the past of this reading is the five of wands. You know, the five of wands is indecision, um, kind of pointless uh, arguing or um, not focused actions, um, plans that uh, don't find a way to fruition. Okay. Um, we can pull out some of those plans and, and pair them up and come up with a way to uh, answer this issue. The sky of this reading is the star. It's almost just what I said. We're going to show that we can shine through with everything that we need, all the beautiful accoutrements that help us in this decision. Um, but we just need to recognize it and shoot for that goal. And then the um, final outcome is the six of coins. And the six of coins, you know, coins, of course, speak to us of our power, of our worth, and uh, the six of coins, also the six of pentacles. And uh, it's typically... This card speaks to us about distributing the value, distributing the wealth, deciding who gets this and who gets that. Exactly what this fellow is doing here. So I think with consideration, avoiding temptation, uh, knowing that uh, we've come to an, it had come to an end point and we sorted out the issues so that we can shoot for the stars and make uh, um, uh, valuable distribution of the wealth. Whatever it might be, the wealth might be just the knowledge of what you're dealing with. So those are the divinations for today, this four card oracle. Hope you got something out of it. And if you didn't, you might want to come back to it another time. Maybe think of someone who's important to you. Uh, and it could be that this is some information that you want to pass on. So that was the four card oracle you pick today with the uh, divinations for each card. And I hope it was useful to you. You know, I don't know that if I say it enough, um, I don't feel like I do, but I really appreciate everyone who watches this channel and who uh, inputs their energy into these readings, and uh, hopefully it's been useful. So, Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.